What is going on, everybody, and welcome to episode number one of our MLB 21 The Show franchise mode. And as you guys can see in front of us, we have chosen the Pittsburgh Pirates to be our first franchise team of the year. We're going to be getting into a bunch of different franchise videos, but this one is going to be the main staple on the channel that we are going to be bringing you guys. This one is going to stick around for a while. As you guys can obviously tell, the Pittsburgh Pirates in need of a rebuild. There is not a lot of structure on this team. There's a lot of things that we can improve on, so we are going to be talking about that each and every episode, talking about each player, breaking things down, and really trying to get this as realistic of an experience for you guys as we can with still providing some fun in the playthrough as well. So if you guys do enjoy today's video, be sure to leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe for more amazing content because only you, only you can make a difference to the channel, so your support is always greatly appreciated. And with that being said, guys, let's get right into the video. So the first thing that I actually wanted to talk about, this is something that is new to MLB 21, the show, and I actually really like this. A lot of people kind of gave the layout of this a little bit of flack whenever they released it, but I think it's pretty good. It gives you guys a really good idea of how your team's going to build. You can kind of see them as they progress, where they're projecting your team is going to be throughout the seasons of 2025, where people are going to be, the overalls, the um, just, I really like it. I really do like this. So in 2021, you're going to kind of look at the team here. Uh, we have a lot to grow on we really aren't in even in the top 10 percentile in any specific spot you can see the bullpen right now 29th overall 27th for first 16th for second 26th for shortstop 13th for cabrian hayes which we'll get into him in a second and then the outfield pretty much in the bottom 25 so not really looking good and not to mention 30th ranking in the starting pitching. Starting pitching is definitely where we were hurting the most. Uh, Chad Cool, Tyler Anderson, Stephen Brault, Mitch Keller, JT Brubaker, and Brendan Malone. Not really the force to be reckoned with type teams. Uh, there is a lot of people that we are going to be talking about maybe sending, moving over. Um, one guy that I do want to mention that we are going to try to sell in this episode is going to be Gregory Polanco. Taking a look at Polanco's number Numbers. You see, he's a D potential. This guy's making $7 million. And personally, he really has never blossomed in Pittsburgh. This is a guy that I kind of want to just cut ties with, move on to. You're going to look at his contract. We could try to eat the 7 mil, but honestly, I think this guy is really just becoming a stopgap for some of those outfielders that I want to try out and want to give an opportunity to. $7 million, this is really going to open up a lot of our contracts and things like that being able to allow us to maybe make some more signings so we'll get into that a little bit later in the video but with that being said guys I wanted to kind of just cover some of the players that we're going to be talking about um, I want to try to keep the Pirates core as much as I can although there's really not much of a core so pretty much what I mean by that core is there's going to be people that are in this organization that we're going to try to hold on to, especially some of the prospects, people like O'Neill Cruz, people like Travis Swaggerty, Cabrian Hayes, um, you see Blake Sabal in there, Brendan Malone, these top 50 guys, Lolo Sanchez as well. These are people that I'm going to try my best to not really trade away because I want these guys to develop. I want to see the Pittsburgh Pirates succeed. This isn't just something that I'm going to be like, oh, let's trade all of our prospects for Mike Trout or something. This is going to be a rather realistic franchise. For those of you guys that are also wondering we are playing on legend difficulty both ways for pitching and hitting and fielding as well. I think there's a difficulty setting for that. I might be wrong. Um, we're going to adjust the sliders as we go because I want to simulate some guys getting good strikeouts, things like that. So the sliders are going to fluctuate here and there until we can really narrow down on a really nice simulation for the sliders. Uh, so right now they are just the standard MLB settings for those of you guys that are wondering. So we're going to talk about those things. And yeah, guys, so th that being said, let's kind of get a little more in depth, see what we're going to be doing and cover those things. So one of the things that I actually want to do, you're going to notice, um, I don't really know, this is like the first time I've ever really noticed this in MLB, there's a lot of guys that have these F potentials, just low overall, and really the age overall, this guy's 33 years old, F potential, these are guys that I'm just really not interested in having the team, so I'm going to DFA a lot of these guys, we're going to go into free agency and just fill out their position, so I just wanted to kind of leave that out there, so that's what we're going to do now guys, we're going to try to drop any of these F potential guys that you're going to be seeing on the rosters and just kind of cleaning things up a little bit and trying to polish this MLB team. 
So we have currently have three F potential guys that we are going to be getting rid of. Two of them are first basemen, so we kind of talked about them and Brian Reed and Michael Jones, and then Joe Wilkerson himself. These guys are all are going to be getting the cut, so we are looking to fill out a couple more positions here. So we're going to head right into free agency, kind of talk about what these guys are going to be. So if you can see, we have Colin Moran right there in the Major League roster. We have... Um, Getting into it over here, Will Craig, 25 years old, 60 overall guy, and then double A and single A, not really too much. We have Warren Looney, but he's still very, very young in his development, so that's a guy that needs some work. Dave Curry, same thing with him. He needs some work, so we need someone in double A and maybe some guy in triple A that can bring some power. Neil Walker was the first guy that honestly jumped out at me, but he's wanting a lot of money. I would love to bring Neil Walker back to Pittsburgh. This would be a nice little reunion maybe, but I don't know if we're going to be able to have that happen for us. So one of the guys that I've actually narrowed down, I think this is going to be a nice guy to have on the team, is going to be Diego Flores. This is a guy from Nicaragua, believe it or not. He's an A potential. Uh, the bat potential is really there, really high vision. The power is pretty balanced at 60 overall. The guy's only 24 years old. The fielding could definitely use some work, but this is already pretty much a major league bat ready to go. Uh, only a 67 overall, but like I said, very young still. A nice lefty bat, something that we're kind of trying to use. So maybe even in the minors, we can turn this guy into maybe even an outfielder, something like that, try to transfer him in there. So Diego Flores is going to be one of the guys we're going to bring a part of this team he's going to start off in triple a probably as the backup triple a guy to start things we wanted to talk about that and get him some play time and the next guy that we are going to be signing this guy is going to try to find his way into the double a roster 23 year old esteban franco 58 overall going to take a look at his contract pretty cheap guy um this is a guy that has a lot of natural pop against righties so hopefully we can do that he's a pretty good overall first baseman so a nice defender in there puerto rican born 23 years old only a C potential, but that could change. It could jump up, so hopefully he can have some nice power bats. This is a guy that can put a couple over the wall for us in the minor leagues and just give us a little bit of depth in our organization. Like I said, just trying to make some changes for, from some of those people that we've dropped in the future. So let's go ahead and sign Esteban Franco. He is going to move to double A whenever we actually mess with the minor leagues, but Esteban Franco, a nice signing for us. Okay, so I think we have finally found a player at third base that we're going to mess with. Um, we're going to mess with Raleigh Fingers himself. Just kidding. This man's name is Harold Ramirez. He's a third baseman, uh, 23 years old and born in Alabama, 175 pounds, 5'10". The bat definitely not really there. The fielding is okay, though. He's a pretty average fielder, pretty durable, too. The guy's going to be a guy that can take a lot of hits and uh, still be able to perform for you. So not too bad there. The fielding's going to be low, but like I said, he's only 23, so maybe this guy can develop into something. Uh, the mustache was a high selling point for us, so we always got to have some, a little bit of pizzazz on the team. So Harold Ramirez, we're going to sign him for a 70K deal, and he is going to start his career off in double A right along there with Hunter Owen. Talking also getting into com uh, contract extensions. These are all the player players eligible for contract extensions. Obviously, we are going to have a decent bit because this is the first year, so I'm just going to kind of cover some of the small and minor ones that we were able to end up getting um, talk about why we ended up signing some of these guys extending some of these guys because some of them really do have some contracts that I want to extend and bring some of these guys and show that we are a little bit more serious about expanding this team so the first guy that we are absolutely going to be trying to extend is key Brian Hayes um, fantastic first showing out of Cabrian Hayes in the major league level in the 2020 year in just 24 games. The dude hit 376. I don't really need to talk more about this guy. Uh, slugging percentage almost in the 700s. That's where I'm hoping to see the slugging out of Cabrian Hayes is in the 700s this year. So hopefully he can build off of a young rookie campaign and continue that. He is still eligible for a rookie of the year candidates. So this season hopefully he can perform really well for us the texas born 24 year old third baseman is going to be a walking prodigy for us so we do want to make him an offer we're going to try to really sign him for something a little bit more long term um, i'm at least looking to give him like a five-year deal and see where that goes so he's looking for 2.6 for that, I think we can easily do that. I'm willing to give him 2.6 for a five-year deal. Um, an everyday player for sure. Let's see if he ends up taking the bait. And he has accepted the offer. So good to see Cabrian Hayes has got a guy that's going to be able to be locked down and have him 
for a decent stint in his career. Another guy that I was also looking to make a nice signing to was Brian Reynolds. This is a guy, I know he had a rough 2020, but that is not the true Brian Reynolds that I know. I believe this guy's going to turn things around in 2021 for us and bring back that nice honeymoon campaign he had in 2019. Uh, 16 home run season. The dude had an on-base percentage of a 377, hitting 314. So hopefully the walks can get up a little more and maybe we can minimize the strikeouts from Brian Reynolds in the campaigns that he had prior to that. But let's hop into this. Let's try to give him a signing here. Um, he's wanting about five years. I'm thinking more about a four-year deal for the 1.9. I'm okay with this. I think 1.9, he'll probably be an everyday starter. So we're going to offer him the everyday role and see if he takes something like that. Brian Reynolds does sign. So we do make some two nice signings in Brian Reynolds and Cabrian Hayes. So two nice signings right there. Like I said, this first episode, we're probably not really going to be getting into too much gameplay. I just want to talk about some of the moves that we're going to be doing, some of the diving into it. And then in the next episode, guys, we're probably going to be covering some of the other things like gameplay footage, some of those things, maybe some prospect profiles, and just trying to really pump out as many of these MLB The Show franchise videos as you want. Like I said, I really want to be a little more in-depth because I know there's not too many people out here that are actually interested in being in-depth and truly trying to rebuild a franchise and continue with that franchise and give you guys something to kind of look for. So that is something that we're going to try to make possible for you guys. And like I said, one of the trades that I did really want to try to focus out is getting rid of Gregory Polanco. So we're going to shop around for Gregory Polanco a little bit, see if we can pawn this guy off on a team that might need a fourth outfielder or even a third outfielder for that matter, because Polanco does offer a nice bat, but like I said, $7 million, I'm not really wanting to pay that anymore. If we can't find anything worthwhile straight up for Polanco and maybe just get a B potential prospect or something like that, because I'm okay with allowing the outfield to be Brian Goodwin Brian Reynolds, and maybe even Chris Sharp or someone like that to call up. Uh, or even I had ideas of having Adam Frazier move to the outfield, and that would kind of limit up our in middle infield problem because we do have a lot of middle infielders and a lot of guys that we could really utilize. So we're going to try to shop him around, and we'll get back and see what we can do. Alrighty, guys. So after looking at some of the trades and some of the things to try to get rid of Gregory Polanco right off the rip, um, I didn't really see anything that really jumped out at the table. There was a couple people that were willing to kind of ship a couple things away. Um, I was going to do this deal for Lewis Brinson. This was one of the deals that I was, thought was... Uh, kind of okay uh, getting Lewis Brinson. This is an A potential 26-year-old, so he is kind of on the opposite end of the potential list right now, but he is pretty fast. He is a 61 overall. This is a guy that really hasn't shown a lot at the major league level. Um, a lot of people have gave him opportunities. He's had plenty of opportunities to try himself out, so maybe a change of scenery would be something good for him. This is kind of one of those an eye for an eye type trades that I was thinking about doing, but the thing with Polanco is if we get Lewis Brinson, we might be locked in on a guy with all these arbitration years and things like that for a long time that is not going to perform, where at least with Gregory Polanco, this is a guy that we know might be able to get us some home runs because in 2018, 2016, the guy did show a glimpse of having a little bit of power. So I think we're going to hold off on trading Polanco just for now. I don't think it's really the right time for us to be trying to make a trade. So with that being said, guys, I'm going to end the trade. We're not going to pull through. We're going to talk about some other things. Um, we are not also going going to be getting into spring training. We're not going to be messing with spring training. So we are going to sim to the regular season. We want to end things on a good note on spring training, taking a look at just some of the other stuff, taking a look at our inbox. Obviously, some of this stuff has stayed the same for those of you guys that know. So like I said, this is just today is just getting a lot of the scouting reports, things like that done, um, fixing up a lot of the stuff that we don't really need to be focusing on. So currently we have someone in the West, East, International, and Central region. So it is good. We have all down the board. Every division is going to be covered. So we're going to set these up real quick, kind of talk about what we're looking for and get into that. Okay, guys, so I did just finish up all the scouting reports and everything like that, so I'm going to kind of talk about each division, why we're going to be scouting, the certain things we are to start things off. So Oscar Cordero, our West Region scout, he's going to be focusing on righties that have some command. I want some righties that are going to be able to put the ball there, really be able to locate. I want good pitchers 
to emerge in our division. Obviously, the Pirates, one thing that is going to be good for us is we are going to have round number one pick number one in the draft so I really want to kind of take the focus to make sure that we are scouting the best possible players and we get the best possible number one pick out of that on top of that in the east region we have someone looking for an outfielder with some pop and some contact something that the pirates have lacked almost all since I've known them has been power we really haven't had too many true power bats so I'm trying to find somebody that's going to emerge and be a huge power bat kind of someone that is going to really be able to put 30 40 home runs over a wall in a consistent season and really have that that's something that we're not really going to be able to trade for maybe in free agency we're going to find somebody that might be able to emerge into that if we sign them on a long-term deal but that's really not something that we're going to be jumping into in the first or maybe even the second year of this rebuild because we are the Pittsburgh Pirates this is going to be a long haul this is going to be something that we're going to have to work on as much as we can on top of that, Philip Tamalo, he's going to be messing with a lefty with the movement. We want somebody that kind of is like a Chris Sale, great knockout slider stuff. The velocity will always be a plus, but if we can have somebody that is an absolute mechanism on the mound, would love to see somebody that can really tie some people up, cross their ankles, and make some fun things. And then we're going to be looking for a catcher that has a strong arm and an even stronger bat, kind of like a Gary Sanchez, if you will, but maybe with a little more consistency in the bat. Um big power batters are becoming more and more of a thing and like I said the Pirates something that we do slack on right now is in the power department Gregory Polanco being the guy that we're trying to trade right now being our best power piece is kind of threatening to this team if we want to make any chance of advancing on the team. Alrighty, jumping into the lineups, we're going to be taking a look at the lineup. This is pretty much going to be the standard lineup that you guys are going to be seeing for the most part in the team. Uh, I pretty much have kept everything just about where they want it because they have a pretty nice thing going here. We have Kevin Newman as the shortstop, going to be in the leadoff role. Um, him and Brian Reynolds might switch around for that leadoff role. I think Brian might fit as a nice leadoff hitter as well, so that'll kind of fluctuate. But for the time being, Reynolds is going to be two, Newman is going to be one, followed by the three hitter in Cabrian Hayes. He's injured in real life, but not in the franchise. So hopefully we can see what Cabrian Hayes can display on the opening day nod. In the four hole is going to be Brian Goodwin, new pirate of this year. Brian Goodwin came from Cincinnati, as you're going to see, 50 games in Cincinnati. Didn't really do the best, but hopefully this is a guy that can kind of see what 2019 brought him. Turn this into a nice 2019, almost an 800 OPS. He's a pretty decent player and is really uh, underrated, I think. So hopefully he can find some success in Pittsburgh. For us, Colin Moran is going to be the first baseman recently transferred over to first base because of Cabrian Hayes coming up to the big leagues. Polanco will be batting six in right field. Adam Frazier is your second baseman batting seven. Jacob Stallings in the eighth spot and Chad Cole or the pitcher spot in the ninth spot followed by the bench. We're going to have Anthony Alford. Michael Perez is the backup catcher. Todd Frazier, the Todd father, is going to be one of our bench bats. Nice power bat off the bench. Eric Gonzalez and O'Neill Cruz. So a lot of young talent on this team. Really going to be something to kind of look at. Taking a look now at the pitching rotation. Probably the weakest thing on this team. And for good reason. You're going to take a look at this team. We're going to get into the bullpen. The first guy we're going to talk about is the closer, Sean Rodriguez. Um, the thing with Rodriguez, he has good break. He has a nice slider. The fastball is in the mid-90s. So not really the best closer, but he does have a glimpse of doing well. He did do pretty good in 2020. Uh, 2019 was definitely a jump for a year for him. But in 2018, he did have a sub-3 ERA as well. The guy does strike out a decent bit of people. So hopefully we can see Richard Rodriguez has really come to form. This is a guy that I think we might try to package away if he is performing good by the All-Star break. So we will see how he does. Left-handed pitcher Chasen Shreve and Kyle Crick, the righty, are going to be your setup guys. I do like Kyle Crick. This is a guy that we got for the Andrew McCutcheon trade. So hopefully Kyle Crick can perform nice, hard, fastball he used to be able to throw but he's kind of simmered that down a little bit turned into a little more of a movement finesse guy so he's only really throwing 91 92 uh he can hit 95 occasionally but the break is really where you see kyle crick excel this is a guy that i would like to try to maybe hold on to i think he's going to perform pretty good for us and then in the middle of the rotation here or the bullpen we have chris stratton austin davis michael Feliz. 
don't get too comfy with this bullpen. This is definitely a bullpen that has plenty of room to improve. Sean Poppin, however, this is a starting pitcher. I'm really excited to see what is popping in Sean's department. Starting pitcher, 77 stamina. The guy has a nice sinker slide up change up mix. So hopefully he can perform. And then Cody Ponce to round things out. So heading into the starting nine, we've already kind of not the starting nine, the starting rotation. We have Chad Cole, Tyler Anderson, Stephen Brault, Mitch Keller, and JT, what's brewing, Brew Baker. So hopefully this is something that we can do. Like I said, I think the goal for this year is to not lose 100 games. I think it's a pretty fair rotation. We're going to try our best to not do it. Like I said, things are getting pretty hectic while we are there. So with that being said, guys, regular day, Regular season is underway, and we're going to be getting into the game momentarily, so stay tuned, and I will see you there.